This video is going to talk about multiplying fractions. Remember that you can find half of a number by finding half of a set. For example, to find half of six, make, an ob make a set with six objects and take half of it. So we have yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. That means that we have three is half of six. So if we want to find half of each of these numbers, that means that we're going to only take half of them. Half of four is two. Half of eight is four. Half of 10 is five. Half of 200 is 100. Remember that the word of can mean multiply. So when you see three groups of four, it means three times four. Half of a group means half times four. You're multiplying half times four. So if we have one half of four or one half times four, half times four is two. Half times eight is four. Half times 10 is five. Half times 200 is 100. Just like we can talk about half of a whole number, we can also talk about half of a fraction. So if we have three fifths here and we want to take half of it, we're going to cut it straight down the middle. So now, half of three fifths, now there's 10 parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So instead of having five parts, we doubled that to 10. Now, instead of having three parts, we have three because we're only taking half of it. So half of the shaded area is three out of 10 instead of three out of five. So they want you to find half of each of these fractions. So half of two ninths means we're still going to have just two pieces, two ninths times half. We're still going to have just two pieces, but now instead of nine pieces, there's going to be 18 of them. Half of five sevenths means we still have just five pieces, but instead of seven, seven times two, we now have 14. Just like over here, we had three pieces that we were talking about, the one, the two, and the three. And when we cut the whole thing in half and we only took the top part, we had still three pieces, but now it was out of 10 total. Half of three sevenths, three sevenths times half is three fourteenths. I'm gonna give you a minute to solve the rest of these and then we'll talk about it. Welcome back. Half of two fifths would be two ten. Half of five sixths would be five twelfths. Half of four sevenths would be four fourteenths. So are these answers the same? Half of four sevenths is 14, it's four over 14. Or half of four sevenths is two sevenths. Well, here we can see that they doubled the pieces. Here, we can see that they did not. Instead of doubling the pieces and just taking one half of each of them on the top, they only took two pieces out of the four. And if we see four fourteenths and two sevenths, those are actually the same fraction. You can simplify four over 14 by dividing by two over two. 
4 divided by 2 is 2, 14 divided by 2 is 7. Or you can take this piece and this piece and put them down here, and then you still have two whole pieces. So let's say we want to find one third of half. We're going to start off with what we have. We have half. To take one third of it, we're going to cut the half into thirds. And we're just going to take one piece of it. So one third of one half means we still have one part but now, instead of being a part of two, it's one of six equal parts. So let's draw pictures to find the fraction of the fraction. Both of these say one-fourth. One-half of one-fourth, to find one-half, if this is one-fourth right here, to find half of it, I'm going to cut it in half, and I just want one of those pieces. One half of one fourth is the same as one over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One third of one fourth, we're going to go ahead and have another box here. Here is one fourth. If I want one third of it, that means I'm going to break the entire thing into thirds or into three pieces. And one-third of this means that now I'm going to have just one piece out of 4 times 3 is 12. So that's one-twelfth. One-fourth of one-half. I could draw the picture for that. I'm going to start off with one-half. And I'm going to break it into fourths and just take one piece of it. Or, I can see that 1 times 1 is 1, 4 times 2 is 8. One part of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. One fifth of 1 half. So again, we have this 1 half here. Taking 1 fifth of it means I'm going to split it into fifths. And if I want just one part of this, that means that I'm going to have one part of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. One fifth of one third. So if we have a third here to split it into fifths, 1, 2, 3, 4, there's fifths. That would be one part of. 5 times 3 is 15. Now go ahead and take a look at the numbers here and take a look at what happens in the numerators and how the numerators are being multiplied and take a look at the denominators. 4 times 2 is 8, 5 times 2 is 10, 5 times 3 is 15. The total number of pieces in the rectangle is the product of the denominators. That's because one of the denominators tells you the number of rows, the other denominator tells you the number of columns. So the answer is always the unit fraction, with the denominator being the two denominators multiplied together. Go ahead and try these on your own without drawing pictures. Welcome back. One third of one eighth, one third times one eighth, one times one is one, three times eight is twenty four. One half of one sixth, one times one is one, two times six is twelve. One fourth of one fifth, one times one is one, four times five is twenty. One half of 2,124, one times one is one, two times 2,124 is 4,248. Remember that of means multiply. That's important to know. To multiply one half times one third, you can find half 
of one third. So go ahead and try to multiply these, and when you come back, we'll talk about it. Welcome back. So we have one half times one third is one sixth. One third times one fifth is one fifteenth. One eighth times one fifth is one fortieth. And one one thousandth times one twenty third is one twenty third. 23 thousandths. All we're doing is multiplying the numerators and putting the answer in the numerator, and then multiplying the denominators and putting the answer in the denominator. So if we want to find four fifths of two thirds, we're going to start off with two thirds because we're taking something out of that two thirds. You can see the two thirds pictured here. Four-fifths of two-thirds means that we're going to break that two-thirds into fifths, and we're going to take four of those. So one, two, three, four. We're going to take all of this up in here. And you can see that that makes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces, when there are a total of three times five is fifteen. Or, 4 times 2 is 8, 5 times 3 is 15. They want you to draw pictures here to find the fraction of the fraction. You can do that, or you can just try multiplying straight across. We're going to pretend like that's equal. So, 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6, 1 half times 2 thirds is 2 sixths. 2 thirds of 1 fourth means we start off with that 1 fourth and we split it into 2 thirds. 2 times 1 is 2, 3 times 4 is 12. That's 2 parts of 12. Let's take a look at the rest of these without drawing the pictures. 3 times 1 is 3, 4 times 2 is 8. You try the next two, and then we'll talk about it. 2 times 3 is 6, 5 times 4 is 20. 2 times 2 is 4, 5 times 3 is 15. How can we get the total number of pieces in the whole rectangle from the two fractions? Well, we're taking how many number of pieces in the bolded rectangle are from both fractions. That's why we're bolding that in. Go ahead and try this multiplication on your own without using a picture. When you come back, we'll talk about it. Welcome back. 3 times 3 is 9. 5 times 4 is 20. 3 times 4 is 12. 7 times 5 is 35. 4 times 2 is 8. 5 times 3 is 15. 3 times 6 is 12. 5 times 7 is 35. I'm sorry, 3 times 6 is 18. That's what I get for looking up at the other problem. 3 times 7 is 21. 8 times 8 is 64. You can also multiply fractions greater than one. So with three halves, you would have three halves. If I want to find four fifths of three halves, I'm just gonna take four fifths of each of these. So that would mean I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 pieces total I'm taking. Four times three is 12. And how many parts am I going to have here? Well, one whole, just like back here, it takes two to make a whole here. So over here, five times two is 10. Our denominator is how many parts it takes to make a whole, which is 10 parts. Go ahead and try to multiply these. Notice that some of these number, some of these fractions are improper. 
which means the bigger number is on top, which means your answer will probably have the bigger number on top. 3 times 7 is 21. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 6 is 30. 3 times 5 is 75. 7 times 8 is 56, excuse me. 3 times 5 is 15. Now, you notice that some of these ended up with larger numbers on top and some did not. It depends on the fractions that you're working with. Sometimes it will end up being bigger, sometimes the numbers just aren't high enough. So, we see 21 over 10. Remember that 10 goes into 21 two times, so we can change that to 2 and 1 tenth. 30 over 75, we can actually simplify that by dividing by 3 over 3. 30 divided by 3 is 10. 75 divided by 3, I know this right here, is 25. And I can still simplify this by dividing by 5 over 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 25 divided by 5 is 5. 56 over 15. Well, I know 15 plus 15 is 30. Plus another 15 is going to be 45. Plus another 15, that's going to be 60. 60 is too much, so I need by 3. So I know that 15 goes into 56 three times, which would be 45. When I subtract this, I get 3 and 11 fifteenths. Sometimes you will have improper fractions that you are trying to multiply. When this happens, you need to change the improper fractions. You need to change the mixed numbers into improper fractions. So remember, this is where we use the C. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5. So 1 and 2 thirds is the same as 5 thirds. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. So now we have 5 thirds times 9 fourths. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11, so that makes 11 over 5. 2 and 3 fourths, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 is going to be again 11. So now we have 11 fifths times 11 fourths. So they want you to multiply by changing the numbers to improper fractions, and then to write the answer back as a mixed number. So let's go ahead and do that. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 3 is 8, so this is going to be 8 fifths, times 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7 thirds. 8 times 7 is 56, 5 times 3 is 15. I'm going to give you a little bit of a spoiler here. We've already done this one. 56 over 15 is the same as 3 elevenths. Excuse me, 3 and 11 fifteenths. That's, that's my fault. When we do the next one, three, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. That's 7 halves. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11. That's 11 over 5. Go ahead and try multiplying this one on your own, and then put the answer back as a mixed number. Then, try letter C on your own as well, and when you come back, we'll talk about it. Welcome back! 7 times 11 is 77. 2 times 5 is 10. 77 over 10? I can fit 10 into 77 7 times. There will be 7 left over. 7 and 7 tenths. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 is 11, that's 11 fourths. One times two, 2 times 1 is 1, plus 1 is 3, that's 3 halves. 11 fourths times 3 halves, 11 times 3 is 33, 4 times 2 is 8. 8 goes into 33 4 times because... Uh, 
Yes, four times, excuse me, because eight times four is 32, which leaves one eighth left over. So let's say that we're making three fourths of a recipe that calls for three and one half cups of flour. And we wanna know how much flour do we use? What expression would that be? Well, we know that the recipe calls for three and one half cups of flour, or knowing that we're going to need an improper fraction here, three times two is six plus one is seven halves, and I need three fourths of this. So three fourths of seven halves, seven halves, three times seven is 21, four times two is eight. Eight goes into 21 two times. That makes 16, which means there's five eighths, two and five eighths left over. If we have two and one half cups of flour, is that enough to cover two and five eighths? Well, let's change two and one half. Let's get that to a denominator over eight. Two times four is eight. Two times four, uh, one times four is four. So if we have two and four eighths cups of flour, is that enough? No. So they wanna know if these recipes will turn out. We have one, uh, five and a half batches of gravy and each batch needs three eighths cups of flour. They have two cups. So we know that we have five and one half batches of, that's how much gravy we have. So let's change that. Two times five is 10 plus one is 11. So that makes it 11 halves. Each batch needs three eighths cups of flour. So what we want to do is we want to take the five, that 11 over two and we're gonna go ahead and we're going to multiply it times three eighths. 11 times three is 33. Two times eight is 16. 16 goes into 33 twice because 16 plus 16 is 32. So that makes two and one 33rd. That 1 33rd means you have just under what you need. Let's take a look at the cupcakes. We're making 3 eighths of a recipe for the cupcakes. The recipe calls for 2 and 1 half cups of flour, or 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5 halves cups of flour. So let's take a look at that 5 halves. We're gonna multiply it by 3 eighths. Three times five is 15. Eight times two is 16. So we have 15 sixteenths. If we have one cup of flour, is that enough? Yes. The other one, not so much. Let's say we're making one and a half batches of cookies or three halves. Each batch needs one and a half cups of flour or three halves cups of flour. They have three cups of flour. So let's take a look. Three halves of three halves, three times three is nine, two times two is four. Nine or four goes into nine twice with one fourth left over. So we're good there with our three cups. If we make two and a half batches of cookies, or two times two is four plus one is five halves, each batch needs one and two thirds cups of flour, or three, four, five thirds cups of flour. Let's see if having four cups of flour on hand is enough. Five halves of five thirds. Five times five is 25. Two times three is six. Six goes into 25 four times because six times four is 24. 
plus one more sixth, we have just, I'm sorry, we have just, yeah, no, we have just under what we need. We need four and one sixth, we only have four. It's a sad day for the cookie batches, but a great day for you, hopefully. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic day.